research and discovery. Futurists. Midday in Gabon, and life plays out around one of the many rivers that flow through this tropical country in Central Africa. But below the surface, an aquatic menace is lurking. This is a typical example. A child is in the water and stays there for an hour or two. That's enough time for the worm that causes this disease to penetrate the skin and begin its life cycle. The illness is called bilharzia, or schistosomiasis. Larvae, living in aquatic snails, move home to a human host, and once inside, they grow and reproduce. As time goes on, their eggs leave the body through urine and find their way back to the river where new larvae are born. They infest the snails, and the process starts all over again. The bilharziose here in this form manifests as Bilharzia in this form shows itself as blood in the urine and stomach pains. It can also bring a general feeling of illness, and if it reaches a chronic stage, it can cause men and women to become sterile. In long-term chronic cases, it can even cause cancer of the bladder. To Krebs in the Harnblase common. Tropical disease researchers in Europe have been studying Bilharzia for several years in various joint projects with their African colleagues. And some time ago, they made an unexpected discovery. This type of infection probably has positive effects too. People who've had systemic worm infections in infancy or childhood develop noticeably fewer allergies than those who haven't had an infection. So now, scientists are working both on how to treat the disease and to understand how it can prevent allergies. We're going to villages to collect urine samples that we'll take to the lab later to see if the children are infected. In most places in rural Gabon, between 80% and 100% of children are infected. And the effects are easy to see. This child has got the illness. When you compare this sample of urine here, for example, as you can see, this one's much more tinted red than this one, which is more yellow, the normal color. But preventative measures are difficult to put into practice. You still go in the water? Yes. What do you normally do in the water? I wash the clothes and the dishes. I wash my hands. You know Bill Hartsey is in the water? Yes. So why do you keep going there? Because the water from the pump isn't very good. The river water is better. OK, we'll take a look at your sample. And if you're infected, we'll bring some medicine. At a laboratory nearby, there's a different kind of research going on. They're studying Bilharzia larvae in snails collected from the river. Scientists think that inside a human host, the larvae and worms activate hormones that provoke immune reactions to allergens. We have no intention of giving people worms, nor maintaining an infection. That wouldn't be of any value in studying allergy problems. But we're trying to extract the molecules from the worms which can trigger these immune system reactions. We're looking for these protective molecules which can activate the protection mechanism against allergies in childhood. 
They're also searching for these elusive molecules at Tübingen in Germany. Parasitologists here are studying how larvae and worms interact with snails and humans. And they already have an inkling about where the molecules act in the human body to suppress allergies. Wir wissen noch nicht, welche we don't know yet which constituents of the worm, which molecules are responsible for this effect. But we partly know which bits of the immune system are concerned with transmitting this effect that suppresses allergies. These are called T-cells, known as regulators. They're introduced by the parasitic worms and trigger a beneficial effect against allergies. Mice are key players in the research. Some have been infested with worms before scientists try to provoke an allergic reaction. And the first results look promising. This works well in the asthma model. The mice which have worms from a very early age cannot develop allergies. So that's something concrete to study in the worm allergy relationship. It'll allow us one day to identify a molecule that will maybe enable us to inhibit an allergy or even eventually cure it. In Gabon, the priority is to treat Bilharzia quickly and efficiently. We're going to analyze the samples we've collected from the children under a microscope in the lab. Alors, bonjour. Est-ce que tu pourras nous vouloir prendre un échantillon enfin? As Akim feared, parasite eggs appear in most of the urine samples. Si elle est positive, on le saura maintenant quand vous voyez, on n'a même pas fait 5 minutes. On peut savoir si notre fille est infectée ou pas. J'ai aperçu il déjà un œuf. I've already found a Bilharzia egg. That shows that the girl we saw in the village is well and truly infected. The eggs are irrefutable proof of an infestation by this parasite. And that's when the treatment can start, while European and African researchers in the heart of Gabon continue to improve their understanding of how to control Bilharzia and at the same time perhaps fight allergies with the help of a river worm. <laughs>